Coming up on The Reaction today, why is the government even bothering with this unenforceable smoking ban? And will Meghan's jams make people buy into her latest money-making scheme? And as Belgian police try to shut down a Conservative conference where Nigel Farage was speaking, is this a war on free speech? Plus, will Trump's trial backfire for his enemies? Hello and welcome to The Reaction with me, Andrew Pearce. And me, Charlotte Griffiths, standing in for Sarah Vine. The Reaction is here every Wednesday on the Daily Mail's YouTube channel, so make sure you like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. It was an historic vote in the House of Commons on Tuesday night, which saw a bill which would introduce the toughest laws on smoking in the world pass its first test. Some have hailed it as a victory for Rishi Sunak, but nearly half of Tory MPs refused to back the ban, including some of the Prime Minister's cabinet. And it was Rishi Sunak's flagship piece of legislation. He announced it at the Tory party conference, and I was there when he did it. And I have to say, Charlotte, when he announced this attempt to stop kids smoking, very noble, very laudable, I thought, where did this come from? No sign it was coming. It was not briefed in advance. And it wasn't just nearly half of Tory MPs didn't support him in the Commons last night. It was a free vote, so that wasn't... Mm. But think about the people who didn't. Suella Bravman voted against him. She told us all that at Liz Truss's book launch party last night. Liz Truss, who shouted it from the rafters at her own book launch party last night, I voted against Rishi Sunak's unconservative ban on smoking. Uh, Priti Patel, the former Home Secretary, she abstained. Uh, the leader of the Commons, Penny Morden, she abstained. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, and of course, um, Kemi Badnock, who is in the cabinet, um, she voted against it. All five of those have yeah, eyes on the leadership. Who, who have eyes on the leadership, exactly. Even but Liz Truss. But yeah, OK, some big, it is some big players. Slightly embarrassing, but the point is it got through, and that's all that matters, I think. You know, and this is a noble aim, as you said. It and is. this is about getting smoking banned. So who cares? In 100 years' time, we won't mind whether it was Kemi Badenoch or whoever else who didn't vote. I get that, but what I don't get, Charlotte, is how this works. So currently, anybody who was born in 2009 when this legis legislation goes through, will not be able to buy legally, be able to buy cigarettes. So first thing, that will lead to a flourishing black market. We've already got one. Uh, even more fags coming across the channel, presumably with the migrants on the small but boats they, they to pay are for their trip. Combat that black market. How because they doing that? They're going to find the tobacconists for selling, uh, you know, to the, the wrong people. The poor old tobacconists. Take who, that money. <laughs> the poor old tobacconist who doesn't know if this person who says, "I wasn't born in 2009. I was born in 2008." in 10 years' time, what, they're going to be fined? How are they going to know? We don't well, have an ID card, speak. Charlotte. We well, don't have an ID card. We don't have an ID card, but and you, I don't could want say, one. <laughs> you could say, if you want to buy fags, you've got to take your passport with you. Okay, it's pretty extreme, but don't forget, we're trying to stop people yeah. killing themselves. Okay, so if I was desperate for fags, I'd first have to find 16 quid, because that's yeah. how much they cost. And also, when Which I did Which is a lot of smoke, money. It's a lot of money. When I used to smoke, I would be so desperate for a fag, I would definitely go and find my passport and take it to the tobacconist, because that's what addiction is, isn't it? Yeah. You kind of would, you'll overcome any hurdle to get, to get your but, hit. But if you look at NHS figures, uh, they will tell you the biggest ticking time bomb in the NHS now, which is killing people, is obesity. Right. So, is Rishi Sunak then going to say, we're going to ban processed food? We're going to, uh, we're going yes. to put more... Is Why he? not? Why really? Not? I honestly Don't you think, think people can choose extreme. to buy their processed ham because they can't what? afford, um, unlike no. you and me, to have the nice ham carved off the bone, <laughs> they've got to buy the processed ham in a packet. But I'm, I'm a victim, like anyone, to advertising and those supermarket aisles with bright coloured boxes of cereal and sugar and processed foods. They're completely designed by scientists to make us buy the product. And even I, you know, even I would do that. So in Charlotte's world, banning fags, we're banning processed ham. We're banning cereal, breakfast cereal. What aren't you going to ban? Oh, well, I don't know. I think I'm going to have to be a monk. Alcohol? Yeah, I couldn't quite bring myself to ban alcohol. But then again, alcohol is just big bottles of sugar, isn't it? So it's kind of the but, same but thing. But it also, it also incapacitates people who get behind a uh, Cannabis? Are we going to send people to prison? I mean, it is the thin end of the road. Look, I think Rishi... Do you know why Rishi Sunat's doing this, Charlotte? Really, the truth. He's desperate for a legacy. He we is, know he his is. premiership is drawing to a close. Yeah. It's been an unhappy premiership. There was a poll on Conservative Home website today giving him an approval rating of minus 27.5%. He that wants is his the David Tory, Cameron gay Tory marriage Yeah, moment. exactly. That is the Tory faithful's verdict. Liz Truss, who was toppled and replaced by, uh, Rish, by Rishi Sunak, has a much 
more positive rating. So he's desperately looking around for a legacy and he thinks, this will be the one. Everybody will support it. Well, and to be fair to him, he not everybody's has supported it, but he has achieved his goal because smoking is going to be bad. I'm sure he had to get some whipped Labour MPs to vote for him. Well, the him. whole Labour Party supported it, as yeah. did all the Liberal Democrats. But he's got to get it through the House of Lords. Uh, and yeah, so it will there. give him that legacy. But what it's reinforced for Tory MPs as we come up to those May 2nd elections, Charlotte, is... He's not one of us. He's not a real Tory. Tories don't ban things. The ban, the, the ban is unenforceable anyway, in my view. And I think it's this, 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 this mm. cigarette thing will make it more likely now, I fear, come May the 3rd, if the local elections are as terrible as I think they will mm. be, that they come knocking on his door and say, Time for our fourth prime minister <laughs> since the last general they election. They won't do that. I think because I think you're right. Obviously, small c conservatism. They don't, you know, they don't approve of nanny state policies like this. But because it's smoking, and because you can't really publicly say, although you are doing it right now, that smoking should be okay. You know, I think he actually will get it through, and people people won't judge him because it's yeah. literally killing people but, smoking. But the, the last thing on this ban. So, 15 year olds. It's to stop people who are 15 now buying cigarettes. So when this goes through in a year's time, when they're 16, they won't be able to buy legally buy cigarettes. They can't now. Oh, well, it is illegal no, for a 16-year-old to buy a cigarette. I, I was quite tall for my age when I was 14. I was buying fags. They, I have to say they were one ninety nine, and you could buy 10 What back brand then. did you smoke? Okay, Marlboro Reds. Oh. It's quite a hardcore one to start on, wasn't yeah, it? I was silk cut. Uh, you're, a, you're very weak because, you know, they they're the lightest cigarette. ones. Yeah, they were. <laughs> I had lungs of steel. Uh, but the thing is, is that actually the barriers for me were, um, as a teenager, were money. So they were really cheap then. Yeah. And quantity, you could just buy 10. So you could scrape yeah. together enough to buy 10. Mm. So they've got rid of those things. But it is children that buy fags and get addicted for their lifetime. Well, I spent 15 years trying to I, quit cigarettes. I was more supportive, actually, because within the same vote was a move to stop youngsters vaping. And That's so, so much all more the, important, all I agree on that. Wicked flavours which are designed to lure children, bubble gum and perfumed and I mean, banana. All of that. There's a vaping shop Ridiculous. near me in North London. If you go past it, it looks like a sweet shop. It's yeah, something it really like that. So and, and by Gretel. the way, it gets adults too. My husband's yeah. forty two. He loves banana flavoured vapes. He's completely and utterly addicted. It's never it's always in his hand. I can't hold hands but, with him on the street because he's got did a stupid he, did, vape. Was in his he hand. smoking before? He was smoking before. He picked up a vape. Never smoked again from that moment well, forward. Well, that's good. But the trouble but with vaping is it's drawing children into smoking you yes. might never have smoked in the first place. But, but I'm anti-vaping because once my husband started vaping, he never stopped. I mean, it's in his hand. At least his fag breaks were few and far between. He's got that vape in his hand mm. all day lo long and he loves the banana flavour. He's just like a kid in a candy shop when he goes yeah. to the vape shop. Anyway, so, you know. do you agree with me or Charlotte, who appears to want to ban everything? Are you going to ban <laughs> baked beans because they've got sugar in them? Well, or do you, I, I, or do you can you only have the sugar, sugar ones. Drink? Right. So Charlotte's um, uh, dystopian view of the world <laughs> where just about everything is banned. No, to be serious, do you support what Rishi Sunak has done with the smoking ban? Or do you agree with me that actually it's unenforceable? Nice try, Prime Minister, but actually it simply isn't going to work. So what you do, you can get in touch with us by emailing reaction at dailymail.co.uk or please comment below. Coming up later on the reaction, will Meghan's strawberry jam be enough to sweeten public opinion? Not mine. Plus, is Trump's trial going to backfire for his enemies who are desperate to see him locked up? And are the attempts to shut down Nigel Farage at a Conservative conference in Brussels a war on free speech? Well, of course she is. Meghan Markle making headlines all over again. She's announced two new reality TV shows. I can't wait. And unveiled her first product from her lifestyle brand. It's strawberry jam. I've got to say, my first reaction to this was, this is a woman we once thought, in the tabloid media admittedly, and in just in the gossip world, that she was going to run for president at one point. I mean, she was aiming she so high. That. And now her big, big major life reveal is strawberry jam. And only 50 pots of them as well. She's only made 50 pots. And uh, I just think it's a really lacklustre start to this great new era in which Meghan is the queen, you know, sort of Gwyneth Paltrow goop star yeah. guru. And is strawberry jam because I think, think strawberry jam, you think Wimbledon, quintessentially English. Oh, yeah, Do you think that's that. part of why she's doing it? Um, 
Because you don't think, think so. strawberry jam in America, do you? No. Ooh, it's, it's not exactly an American thing. I think it's her new thing. This is so weird because she's supposed to be a feminist, okay, but in her, in her sort of rebranding in America, she's Mrs. I make jam from my grandmother's recipe and I cook and I garden and I oh. value friendship. It's actually kind of very domestic style. Yeah kind of rebranding for her. And so that's why I think she's come up with the strawberry jam thing. I actually don't think it's a Wimbledon related thing. I have to say, look, you probably know, I'm not keen on Meghan Markle. In fact, I can't stand her. And I think she's having to, if this is a sign that what's gone on the last couple of years, Charlotte, has not worked. No, totally Her poll not. ratings, opinion polls, proof rates are absolutely she's trying rock to find bottom. The she's, safest absolutely. domain to be yeah, operating out of. Like, I'm a wife yeah, and mum and I make jam. Campaigning radical feminist hasn't worked. People yes. just think she manipulates her husband, who's not very bright, into saying terrible things about the royal family. She's fallen out with her entire family too. Yeah. Uh, and and isn't the website this this lifestyle website also about friendship? It's about friendship. That's one oh. of the things she's going to be celebrating. Friendship. What does she know about Can that? Can you then? name any friends of Meghan Markle? Okay, I, there's the Nacho Figueres, the polo player, his wife. She's right. friends with. Right, she was friends with Jessica Mulroney. Fallen out. out. And she and she, her kids were, you yeah. know, pages at the yeah. royal wedding. For heaven's sake. She was friends with um, George Clooney and Amal. Oh no, oh, yeah. they'd met once. They met once. Oh, and, and then they were Oprah, the wedding. Oprah came to her wedding, but it turned out Oprah had never really met them before, no, and was exactly. only after a big interview deal, exactly. which, to be which fair, she, she got. got. And Oprah nearly. Oprah was so far in the front of that wedding, she was virtually in the Queen's lap. Yeah. No, and 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 I do remember a very early interview with Thomas Markle, her dad saying. She falls out with everybody. So the idea that she's going, she's going to be giving lectures on friendship. Yeah. Uh, but I do think it's a sense of, I think there's a crisis in Montecito if this mm. is the best she's coming up with. Yeah. Strawberry jam, as you say, this is a woman who's made major speeches at uh, feminist yeah. conferences. Yeah. And there was talk that she was going to talk there to, was. Se she was calling senators yeah. in America. She hired in, she hired in uh, Michelle Obama's PR man. She did. That's what got us all talking. We were like, this is a major sort of political PR person. What's yeah. she doing behind the scenes? Yeah. It wasn't strawberry jam Making back jam. then. Do you need, do you need uh, you know, an Obama press advisor to help you make Maybe. strawberry jam? Maybe no. she's pitching for a job with the Women's Institute, Jam in Jerusalem. Actually, that would be quite a good little move for what her. What do you think? I don't think she'd actually go down too well on the British Women's no. Institute, and I don't think they have it in America. Am but, I unfair yeah, in disliking her? I think I think the problem is is that we can see through this. We know that Meghan is not at home with her marigolds on, making jam, Absolutely right. and talking about friendship. We know that actually she's seen Gwyneth Paltrow, who created Goop and has earned millions and millions, if not billions, out of Goop. So we know that this is actually probably a marketing ploy because she wants to be a serious, um, you know, businesswoman, uh, really. And, and, and but she's trying to keep it so domestic as yeah. if it's a low-key sort of thing. Uh, just remind me what Goop does, what that website her. Goop sells... <laughs> it's a lot well, of girly stuff, isn't it's it? It's a lot of girly stuff, including candles that have very rude scents. Oh. But also, it, <laughs> yeah, I won't say the word here, but mm. it's called Smells Like My... Oh yes, I yeah. do remember. Yeah, but, um, but you know, but it, but it is also stuff like sort of jams and perfumes and and um, beauty products and stuff. Yeah. And I can see that probably right. being the direction that Megan's going to go in. But she's starting with fifty pots of jam made on her kitchen table. And can I just say, look, I'm not an expert uh, by any means on anything. People are rushing and shouting at the screen, <laughs> of course. But I thought the little pot with the twee little wrapping on the top was naff. Enough, and also lacking in glue because already the labels of all those little pots are starting to come off, which oh. people have started noticing on social media. Oh. Um, I can't imagine, you know, anything other than she was just sticking them on with her Pritt stick at home. I mean, it does seem like and what about this the, is uh, not a proper product here. And was there much imagery on the t on the top? So she's got her. So you know, Megan's well known for her calligraphy. So she's used her calligraphy on the pots of jam. And I've spoken to a calligrapher I know today, right. and she has assassinated oh, the calligraphy. So, for example, see, I wouldn't have noticed this because I'm not a calligrapher, but if you are a calligrapher, you notice these things. So, the, where it says American, it loops over at the end of the end and reads like Americano. Oh, which is apparently a big. coffee. Yes, exactly. So, there's, so, one thing is that's very important in calligraphy is you have to be able to read the word. And then another thing is, all the letters are different heights on the next word along. Right. And anyway, this calligrapher friend of mine just said that this is not 
a very good example of calligraphy or marketing because the label isn't very clear. It's also, we know it's a name that's quite hard to remember. Can you remember it off the top of your head? I've forgotten already. No, exactly. It's not Bon Maman. It's not as simple as that, is no. it, somehow? And uh, and then the logo is quite regal looking. I oh, think I saw yes. a little crown at the top. I Some people say it's did. not. I bet you. But, but she wants you to, to think of it. It's very fancy and regal, isn't it? And yeah. let's, let's be honest, we know why, because yeah. she's Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. And she how, always tells us. And how much would this jar of jam cost? God, I actually don't know off the top of my head. I wonder. But because I bet it's expensive. Not that, I, not that I'm going to buy oh, it. Oh, actually, we don't know yet because she's giving it away for free oh, to her she's friends. All heart, That's isn't why she? I don't know. Not and for charity, she, then. She, yeah, she, she is going to obviously release them. Her website's still um, she, not selling she, products she, yet. She, she, there are 50 jars, so she can't possibly be giving it to her friends because she doesn't have 50 friends. That's actually a really good point, but she would probably dispute that. I mean, yes. she's managed to find 50 people in the roller deck, so yes. you haven't just smashed it on her rival. Imagine if she sent it to Kate, it goes straight in the Course. bin. What would you do if you got a pot? Would you t try it or would you put it on the mantelpiece? Put it in the what Sell it on it? eBay for loads and loads of cash. I don't know. Proof that I'm underpaid. <laughs> exactly. Fascinating. <laughs> if it had only been black, black currant jam. Do you like black currant jam? I do, actually. It it's her grandmother's it recipe, you know. Very rare. Yeah. Do you believe that? No. So we'd love to know your reaction. Comment below or email reaction at dailymail.co.uk. And still to come on the reaction, will the trial of Donald Trump prove to be not yet another tactical blunder by his enemies? And why the prayer ban victory for Britain's bravest head teacher is a victory for all schools. And in show business, Victoria Beckham's OTT 50th birthday celebrations and the lowdown on that feud between Sharon Osbourne and Amanda Holden claws out. A political storm has erupted in Brussels after its left-wing mayor failed to shut down a Conservative conference featuring Nigel Farage and Suella Braverman. A closure order has been overturned by a Brussels court and condemned by the Belgian Prime Minister as unacceptable. What was that left-wing mayor in Brussels thinking of? An absolute gift for Nigel Farage. Total gift. Who can talk about freedom of speech. And, and to be happening in Brussels, in the shadow of the Berlimont building, the home of the European Union, the European Commission, of course he's going to say it's revenge for Brexit because it was a socialist left-wing mayor who hates Nigel Farage because he sees Nigel Farage as the embodiment of uh, the uh, Brexit, Brexit campaign. Yeah. And he'd be absolutely right. And because the police swooped in while Nigel was Farage speaking. was on stage at that exact I moment. I was praying for them to go on stage while Nigel was speaking armed to try to cart him off so he could Rest be him. the great martyr. I mean, he was never going to be led off that stage. He just carried on talking. He knew it was going yeah. on. They sneaked Miriam Cates, a Tory MP, in through a side door. But it was a complete own goal. Total own goal. And also his third attempt to shut it down because the, uh, the Brussels mayor had already put pressure on two different venues not to host the whole event. And they did indeed pull out. So this was the third attempt, his third attempt to shut it down. And it failed. And of course, Nigel Farage is going to dine out on this for, for months, very if not long years. Time. And the mayor, stupid mayor, if you're watching, Mr. May, very welcome <laughs> to come on. But you're very stupid because he claimed that the conference would be a threat to social order and could be a breach of the peace. Uh, no, he caused the breach of the peace yeah, the by trying to shut down a conference which has yeah. been going on for years yeah. all around the world. We held it in London last year. We had it in London year. last year. Yeah. Sadiq Khan didn't try to shut it down. No. And I'm sure, you know, it's not exactly his favourite cup of tea Quite. for Sadiq Khan. Um, but yeah, it was a total own goal. And the only disturbance was all these sort of heavy armed police yeah. storming the event. I know. And Just at the moment, Nigel Farage got on stage. And, and who would have even noticed the conference? None of us. Yeah. We'd have ignored it. We'd have barely written about uh, it. Uh, uh, no, exactly. I didn't really write it at all. Certainly wouldn't be talking about it on the reaction. But as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh my God, what a gift for Nigel. The yeah. gift that just keeps giving. He wants to be a martyr. Of course he does. Of course. I mean, this is fantastic publicity for him. And this is exactly what he's been saying all along is that, you know, slightly right of centre voices are being silenced by yeah. people in, in Europe. Yeah. And it's not like it is the far right, because that's what he was claiming. He was claiming, uh, the the, um, the mayor was claiming this is going to be a hotbed for hate speech and far right. But it, it wasn't really. No. It's just Nigel Farage well, talking about Brexit a little uh, bit. Yeah, and Miriam Cates, who's a Tory MP up in Lancashire, she's not far right. She's, she, she believes it. She, she's, she's a, a great supporter of Jacob Rees-Mogg. Neighbour called Jacob Rees-Mogg a, 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 a foaming at the mouth uh, 
yeah. deranged right wing uh, fanatic. Uh, and today, and it's also on, on Wednesday, the Hungarian Prime Minister spoke, an elected member of the uh, 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 European democracy and Hungary are in the European Union. So yes. he was trying to close down a prime minister as well From who's part EU. of the European Union. And he's in Brussels every five minutes attending five conferences exactly. and giving speeches. You yeah. know, he's part of their community, as yeah. it were. And he is probably more far, far right than anyone else yes, that was there. Of course. But nevertheless, but an elected not... prime minister in a democracy. Yeah. But it, the, it, the, the notion that they could do this in Brussels of all cities. I know, it's just, it's just embarrassing. I embarrassing. It's and so you know, Nigel, who was a part of the European, well, he was an MEP for over 20 years, uh, going back to Brussels and a Brussels mayor taking him on, and as per usual, coming off worse. I mean, you take on Nigel Farage at your peril. Yes. Think about that bank that tried it, to... Yes, to, exactly, coots all over again. Yeah, exactly. I mean, well, clearly the London, the, sorry, the Brussels mayor doesn't read the newspapers over here because the coots debacle turned out totally in his favour. Of course it Obviously did. Brexit did. You know, this is, it's a really easy trap to fall into and he walked right into it yeah. with both his eyes open. And Suella Braverman was there too, the former Home Secretary. I saw her later uh, on Tuesday night. She was at the, at the book launch of, of um, uh, Liz Truss's book launch. And she um, was reveling in the fact she was at a conference which they tried to close down. And she said to me, she said, apparently I'm a right-wing fanatic, which is effectively, by the way, what we're streeting, the Shadow Health Secretary said, in the House of Commons. Oh, uh, she's at a far, Suella Braverman, who's at a, far right conference. She should be very home there. Uh, well, all this has made us do is re-examine the conference and exactly who was speaking and decide that actually it's not that far right, it's just no. slightly right of centre. Yeah, so exactly. another um, own goal on all fronts. A big own goal. And um, whether you like Nigel Farage or hate Nigel Farage, because let's be honest, it's difficult to be neutral about Nigel <laughs> Farage. Do you think he was in the right when he said this was a ta an attack on free speech? Uh, we'd like to know your thoughts, so please email reaction at dailymail.co.uk or of course comment below. Donald Trump, making history again, the first former US president to face a criminal trial. He's appeared in a Manhattan courthouse and has denied allegations he falsified business records to conceal hush money payments and slammed the trial as an assault on America. I'm sorry, it's a <laughs> gift for him. Another gift. Another gift. Look, if it's a choice between Trump and Biden, I'm not going to vote. I wouldn't vote for dopey Joe Biden, who barely knows he's president, frankly. And um, uh, Trump, is, every time he, he, the, the courts are deployed against him, his poll rating goes up. Yeah, his followers just, think, well, it's that martyr thing again. His yeah. followers just think, poor old Donald Trump, this is so unfair, it's a miscarriage of justice. And also a huge gift for his campaign, because while he's not going to be on the campaign trail attending hustings, because he's going to be in court most days, mm. his face is going to be on the front page of every American yeah. newspaper. It's going to be a huge show trial. It's going to be a complete drama. You know, yesterday he was pretending, I think he was pretending, to fall asleep during the court thing. Of course he was. The court trial. And um, I just don't think he was trying to fall asleep, but he's going to do stuff like that, isn't he? He's going to like play up to the cameras, play up to the whole and, drama. And he will leave the courthouse, as he did yesterday, having been told explicitly by the judge you behave, otherwise you'll go to prison. In other words, don't treat contempt of court. He then proceeded to say it was a show trial, it was a gimmick, it was an attempt by the Democrats yeah. to bring him down, masterminded by dopey, sleepy Joe Biden in the White House. Um, uh, whether Joe Biden is pulling strings behind scenes, we don't know, Charlotte, do we? But uh, it's a but gift that's what because, his supporters are going to think. Yeah, that's what Trump supporters are going to think course, now for it, it, the next few months. It's a democratic city. The Attorney yeah. General despises him, he says. She's democratic. She's a Democrat. She's a political appointment. She's probably got ambitions, political ambitions of her own. Yeah, and the next thing that's going to happen is Barron is graduating, Barron being his son. Yeah. He must, I can't believe he's actually old enough to graduate from school because I always remember him being a little kid. Yeah. But Barron's going to graduate, and what, what's being talked about is that Trump won't be able to attend the graduation because he's going to be in court, which again martyrs him. And oh, all his supporters yeah. will say, I want to be with my family, yes, my exactly. son. Would he have actually attended if it wasn't for the court case? Yeah, oh, um, maybe so, not. But, um, so, and the trial could run for, could run for weeks. Yeah, it could run for weeks or months. It's going yeah. to be, you know, he's going to love it. He's a show pony. He'll play up to the cameras. It'll be a huge drama. And watch the money pour in for yeah. the donors. The yeah, money it's will a really pour good point, actually. In uh, because they'll think, because he's got to pay his legal costs and all, all the other stuff, but the money will pour in because people think, here we go again, the Demo if they can't beat him at the ballot box, they'll try and take mm. him out through the courts, because that's what it's about. Yes, but and the other thing about the court case is it's such, it's such a seedy subject, because it's about Stormy Daniels and 
paying her to, you know, hush her up over yeah. their alleged yeah. um, affair. But actually, it's amazing how that barely even comes up because people are so used to that narrative That's now. That's the point. It Shock just horror. Slips Donald, right Trump, off him. Donald Trump's a bit of a sleazeball. Yeah. Shock yeah. horror. Who'd have known that? For anyone else, Who'd it'd be more it? to find to have yeah, the word Stormy course. Daniels in every article. But for him, it's absolutely fine. And, you know, it's his supporters don't even seem to mind about that anymore. They're, they're more thinking, poor him, he's not going to be able to attend his son's graduation. Yeah, I mean, I, the one person I feel, I feel for a bit about all of this is Mrs. Trump, Melania, who's very beautiful and was the first lady, feel didn't put a foot wrong. But, but she, she has to read all this stuff, but then she knows what her she husband knows is. Exactly what she was getting into. Listen, Melania is, is him. after fame, power, and money, just like the rest of us. Yeah. I'm sorry to say. But did, did you think when he lost the election that she'd be gone in no time at all? Because I yeah. thought she might be. Yeah, I did actually. And I was so surprised to hear she that is. she's going to be by his side yeah. for this new campaign. I mean, I just. I don't want to start a conspiracy here, but he must have persuaded her somehow. You know, whether he begged for her forgiveness or said, I'm going to make maybe, you, maybe you she know. Lo- I think she probably loves him. Do you think she loves him, really? Yeah, I mean, He's I, quite unlovable, I hate to tell yeah, you. Yeah, I, well, I'd have thought so, but perhaps there's, he's the father of her children. Oh, that's a good reason. And um, maybe, maybe she does love him. Let us know your thoughts by commenting below or emailing reaction at dailymail.co.uk. My allergic reaction this week is to the unbelievably brave headmistress, Catherine Burblesing, the strictest head teacher in Britain, who is being sued by a Muslim pupil over her blanket ban on prayer rituals in the school. Thankfully, the claim was dismissed in the High Court, but not before the pupil was handed, get this, £150,000 of taxpayers' money in legal aid to bring the case. I'm sorry, that is outraged. £150,000, Charlotte. That means the school's costs would have been pretty similar. Has that come out of school funds? Has that come out of the kids' um, uh, summer vacation fund? Or has that come out of the book fund? Or have they had to crowdfund? That is not what legal aid is for. If that family was so intent on changing the rules of a school, which when their daughter joined the school, that was the rule. No worship of any description, not yeah. Catholic, not Jewish, not Hindu. Uh, they should have funded it themselves. But the only thing is, how would you go about telling them they couldn't get legal aid? I would, it's it tricky. Just, it's a, it's it a just, point of principle across the nation, isn't it? Legal you, everyone aid, is entitled to legal aid. Legal aid should be for people who've got to take on a giant, yeah. very expensive giant, uh, and a David and Goliath situation. Yeah. This, this, why, this, was, this was a case that didn't need to be brought. Uh, the school is one of the most successful in the country. More pupils from that school, I think, than any other in a London school go to some of the Russell universities. She's a brilliant head teacher, and it was, what she was saying was the ethos of the school would be shattered if mm. um, Muslim children were allowed to pray at lunchtime because actually they will have lunch together. So the, I'm sorry, the legal aid board sort of said, what's your case? Yeah, There's well, no, because listen, you can't I just think, think I want to sue so I should get spent. money. But I do think that it's very difficult to turn down a case for legal aid because it's a bigger issue. But what I do think, and I am sort of on the side of the Michaela School, but what I do yeah. think is, could there have been a way in which this was tackled before it got to that stage? So the Michaela School is famously strict. It's the strictest school yeah. in the UK. Good. But actually... You know, when you have a really, really strict school, and by the way, at this school, you have to have lunch with your teachers. You do. You have to speak in full sentences. Yeah. And they give you the subject matter that you're allowed to talk about over mm. lunch. And this is their break. And by the way, it's the teacher's break. So the teachers probably need a break as well. So it's very, very strictly uh, regimented. That's right. So it's But successful. when you have problems like that, little flare-ups happen because schools aren't naturally meant to be like that. Mm. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think it's great to encourage religious tolerance and inclusivity. But when you tightly stranglehold a school like that, you're going to have you know, some crazy flare-ups and some eruptions here and there. Sure. So could they have monitored the process a little bit more slowly well, so that it didn't get to the point where they were you know, forced to ask for legal aid because they were so infuriated? Well, the, if, the judge, as part of the ruling, said that the school was, enti- was quite right and entitled to suspend the student for a period of time because the student had been, according to the judgment, rude and rude to teachers. And also remember, the the, the school was subjected to bomb threats. A teacher had a brick put through her window. So-called community leaders rallying behind this girl to say they must have their Muslim prayers at lunchtime, which, as you say, would shatter what they were doing at lunchtime. Mm. Why didn't they raise their own money? 
Yeah, they probably could have done it, actually. Not as difficult. you say, if they did have I've a lot of Muslim community yeah, leaders in yeah. the surrounding I've, areas. I've heard enough people on television and radio and read about them in the mail um, in, from Muslim leaders too, who were supporting this action against yeah, the school. Could have they could have crowdfunded. Yeah, it's no, not that difficult. Is actually, that and is I, I think case. people already feel um, this, that religion in this country, if you're Christian in particular, is, is under siege. Uh, and if they look at the way the marches over Gaza have been policed, where it appears that anti-Semitic abuse is tolerated. Um, mm, uh, and, 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 and I think this is a hugely important victory for the school. No, but it's again, a point of principle. And by the way, this girl might appeal. What if yeah, she gets more legal she'll get more legal Well, there, we, there, there, there ought to be an outcry, and we hope there's an outcry on the reaction to this, because I hope you agree with me. Charlotte's being a bit liberal on this subject, <laughs> in my view. No, I do. I don't think she should have got legal aid, but h how do you stop people getting le legal aid? That's the, that's the tricky well, moment. It's an outrage, I guess in social my view. pressure. An outrage. Well, my allergic reaction this week is to the Royal Stoke Hospital <laughs> for putting up a banner featuring 21 different flags representing different genders and sexualities. At a time when most people struggle to get in an appointment, this is surely ridiculous. I've got some of them on my cards here, okay? Oh my you God. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is the one that really got me. Demisexual. Oh. Sexual attraction to someone only after emotional closeness. Which I would say is going on a date. Yes. Or falling in love with your friend, as yeah. per all Richard Curtis movies. Yeah. Does that get its own category? That's just life. Sometimes you fancy your friends. There's one that begins with N that I'd never heard of, Neutras or something. Well, there's non-binary, we know about that. Oh yeah, Neutroids. Person who lacks a specific gender identity, which is different from non-binary, which is those who do not identify as male or female. See, I, I, it's the I, same thing, isn't it? Yeah, and what a complete waste of time, effort and money. It gives the gay community, the trans community, a bad name. And how why long are it they, take to come up with how these? Exactly. And what does it achieve? What are they saying? All these different genders are welcome in the hospital because everybody's welcome in the NHS because it's free at the point of. Yeah. But this, by the way, is one of the most failing NHS hospitals in the country. It's the Royal Stoke, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah. And it's got a terrible record. And is this a distraction from the, the fact? Because it's, it's so woke, isn't it? It's That's what beyond. it's about. It's just, it is a joke. I think, honestly, we'll look back in 100 years' time, 10 years' time, one year's time, and think this is the biggest joke. And the waiting list at this hospital is ridiculously long, yeah. as it is everywhere. Yeah. And they had all these admin assistants. I'm yeah. not saying it was a very expensive project, by the way, but it's definitely time consuming. Of course it, it was. Took, took quite a long time to write these 21 things down on this card, let alone on a yeah, flag, yeah, and, yeah. and to come up with them in the first place. And, you know, it, it's just a complete waste of time. Whoever that admin assistant, <laughs> you know, she should have been focusing on the waiting list or going through the waiting list, making some phone calls. I can't stand it. You know, I can't stand it. And, it is, it's and, a joke. And I, if, if the Conservatives had only got a grip of this issue a long time ago, because they are on the right side of this, it's called the culture war, isn't it? I don't think yeah. we should even call it a culture. I think it's just be common sense. Common sense needs to break out here. Yeah. That, those, that trust or hospital should be ordered to take those down. Because yeah, well, that's a very strong way of putting it. Order them to take it down. It's infuriating and patronising and irritating. But the Conservatives could have embraced this because Labour are all over the place on it. Um, yes, you know, they should have. They've, they've had to apologise and clarify their position on the trans thing after yeah. the CAS report last week. Yeah. We had Keir Starmer saying um, uh, women may be able to have a penis. No, they can't, Sophia. Have <laughs> they a look. They could have taken this, you know, they could have, the Conservatives could have taken this and run with it. They could. And be scoring political points left, Absolutely. right and centre. And let's face it, they need to score a few because <laughs> um, they need to have been run off the pitch if that's yeah. a if, yeah. if it was a cr cricketing and to analogy. to miss something so obvious, I don't get cr cricketing analogies, really <laughs> but to miss something as obvious as this is silly. And look, we're bringing it up. Yeah. And the other thing is that human beings are multifaceted individuals. We don't have to label every single no. preference, nuance to our personality, you know, to, fall, to, to, to give a name to falling in love with your friend, it doesn't require a name. Humans don't need to have a name for falling in love with their friend. It happens all the time. Increasingly on forms now, it says um, what gender, and I think they've got mine. They've got they've, I've got Mr. Andrew Pierce, and then they're asking what gender. I don't fill it in, yes. and then it comes oh, back. Really? You haven't filled it in. I said I filled it in. So you're slowing down the whole process then, yeah. because you fill out a form, then you get a bounce back. Yeah, but, but, and, and, you're but just I stick to my gun. I am. That's probably a good thing to do, actually. I mean, it's pretty obvious if you're a mister, you're yeah. he slash his, as they like yes. to say on the bottom yes. of emails yes. these days. Yes, I know. What pronoun would you like to use? <laughs> I'm mister. 
Mr. Mr. Andrew Pierce. That's fine. Yeah. That'll do. Yeah. We love reading your comments here on Reaction. So last week we discussed a poll in which the Princess of Wales, don't you love her, was voted the most liked royal. And we asked you who your favourites are, and unsurprisingly, yes, Catherine came out top. Violet on YouTube says, totally agree with the poll. I can't understand why they would even consider Prince Harry, Meghan or Prince Andrew. My vote would be zero for all three. Agree with that. Mm. Francine says, Meghan and her husband shouldn't appear anywhere on the royal list as they are not royals. It's kind of a good point. Very good. And regarding our discussion on the treatment for trans youngsters after that landmark CAS report, Philip on YouTube says, the NHS was not set up to do gender reassignment operations. It was set up to do basic operations, treat coughs, colds and other run-of-the-mill ailments. If people want gender reassignment, why don't they pay for it themselves? And Laura on YouTube says, I'm thankful that sanity has entered the subject of childhood gender reassignment. It was getting scary for a while. And if you want to message us about any of this week's talking points, you can comment below or email reaction at dailymail.co.uk. So it's time for the showbiz reaction with our showbiz supremo, Katie Hind. And it's Victoria Beckham's 50th birthday. Were those celebrations a little over the top? No. Do you know what? I think people were anticipating her to have a big, big um, over the top Because they had the throne for the wedding anniversary, didn't they? Uh, yeah, they've had... I think the wedding day. They a wedding day, of course I think, it was. Yeah. I think they, no, yeah. no, no, no. I think they sort of, you know, send themselves up a bit. They do yeah. like to have a laugh these days as, yeah. as they're get, getting a bit older. But no, I mean, we haven't seen her today yet. Um, although I believe she's at a She's got all her family with her today. Nice. So Brooklyn, uh, Nicola Peltz, his wife, um, Cruz is floating from right. LA. Um, but if you go on her Instagram, you certainly wouldn't miss it. It's her birthday. So she's been not, not only has David been posting pictures, videos, you know, all through the years, unseen pictures of her, some flattering, some not so. She's posted all of her Vogue covers. Right. Um, really? There's been a lot. So there's been a lot. Um, so she's having a really, you know, big day of it. But fast forward to Saturday which is the big dinner. So, you know, there were lots of rumours that it was going to be at Glen Eagles, silly rumours doing the rounds, um, that she was having a four-day bash there. Um, no one's got any idea where this came from, but actually she's having a, a, res a, a dinner in a restaurant in, I believe, Mayfair. Right. For That's about 30 key. people. Yeah, well, yeah, because I think actually she hasn't got loads of friends. Um, no. She's not really, I think, as flash as people think. No. I think she just wants a nice, classy I, I, dinner. I've got to say, I'm a fan of hers because if you think she's part of the Spice Girls, probably one of the most successful girl bands in history, uh, she was the, probably the least talented because she couldn't really sing, could she? But she's still at the top of her game. Oh, do you know what I think mm. it is? I think she's worked so hard yeah. at that fashion brand. And, yeah. you know, she's had so many knocks, hasn't she? And she's got to she's got to 50 and she just doesn't care what people think anymore. And if you if you even notice, she smiles now, doesn't she? That She was so paranoid about smiling for so long. Yeah. She's gone to 50, she's like, do you know what? I don't care what people think of me anymore. Yeah. I think and that's really a great refreshing. era for her because she's always been really self-conscious and you've mm. written before how mm. she's decided to started to start smiling again and I think it'd be really good to see her like being out and proud and yeah. owning her how funny she is she's really funny isn't she well I think on Instagram um, she she and David like to sort of there was a video where they, they often zoom into each other's bottoms yeah and and Victoria apparently loves it because she's like well I'm nearly 50 which is 50 today and and David still loves my bum yeah. So that's great. So oh, nice. they, seem, great they seem to have actually found... So that's found... a cerebral conversation, I think. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. I mean, yeah. They work out together, don't they? They go yeah. to the gym. They actually seem closer than ever, I think. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I think, you know, I don't think it's a secret that there's been some ups and downs over Course, the years. But that's the same in older marriages. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah they're just very public. It can't be so easy of I, either for her being married to a man who lots of women are in yeah. love with one of the most famous glamorous footballers on mm. the planet yeah, as women he was. Well, them I, I think, think yeah. she's aging better than him. Yeah. I really do well, think she's aging Well, all those awful, better. awful tattoos. I mean, and well, there was a yes. picture of me in just his undies the other day. Not a great look, David. No, Put no. your clothes on, mate. When we get to a certain age, it's not oh, great. Oh, stop no, it, he's Brad. he's not too old, but he's not too old. To, he can still be topless every now and yeah. again. We all yeah. kind of want to see that. Yeah, but, but there's too many tattoos, Charlotte, and I think yeah. they, they, they're actually quite ugly. Yeah, he must I mean, I love them. Yeah. No, he doesn't. He's having more and more all the what? time. Um, but talking of the, the working out, um, Victoria, she broke her foot on Valentine's Day. Right. And she's, she's had, a, had it in a boot ever since. And she's desperately hoping 
that she's going to be able to wear some stilettos for her birthday. Right. So um, apparently it was in good shape at the weekend. So she's what, been the the first? The first, yeah, the first in good shape. She's been having scans and lots of. She's know. dusting off her Manolos. Yeah, she's bought herself a new pair, I think. So it's all about Saturday night. Right. Um, uh, there's going to be a Spice Girl or two there, I think, probably. Emma and Emma Bunton and, and Melanie C. But Melanie not Jerry C. Horner. She's still looking her wounds yeah, after Jer the Formula One I stuff. Don't, I don't think <laughs> Jerry's not really engaging too much with the no. rest of the Spice Girls at the moment. I think no. she's got other fish to fry. She does. Um, so I don't believe she'll be there. Right. Um, and I've been told it's not rent a crowd. It's very much her friends, mates. family, her mates. I think Eva Longoria is flying over. Um, but it's obviously Gordon Ramsay, Gordon Ramsay his wife his Tana. Wife, yeah. But a lot of it's going to be, you know, I mean, she's got quite a big family now anyway. Mm. And lots of her colleagues. And, you know, she loves her staff at her fashion label. So, yeah, I think she's quite What's it called, her fashion label? Victoria, Victoria Beckham. Beckham. Clever. Yeah. What else would you yeah. call it? Because she oh, is. Right. Should that. you she's call it? That's the brand, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. And I think, I'm, honestly, I do. I speak as an admirer of her. I think she's all right. Do you know what? I think, I think. We've all had, you know, I'm sure for years, you know, she's been a bit of a, a bit of a target, hasn't she? Yeah. Mm. But I think she's so cleverly turned it round. She has. She really yeah. has, and I, and I think that's down to hard work. And Brand Beckham is a pretty lucrative brand. Oh, well, I mean, yes, I mean, she's got about 30, 30, 365 million pounds in the bank. Well done, her. Huh? One million for every day of the year. But every on, day of the year. <laughs> on to the next neighbour story, because I'm desperate to get my teeth into this yes. one. It's all been kicking off between Amanda Holden and Sharon Osbourne. Tell us all about it. So um, it was actually our very own Weekend magazine um, who interviewed Amanda Holden. And Amanda was asked um, what she thought of Sharon Osbourne and Louis Walsh being quite mean about Simon Cowell while they were in, while they were in the Big Brother house some weeks back. And Sharon was, they were both giving him a bit of a hard time. You know, Louis was poking fun, fun at his, you know, has he or has he not had Botox? And Sharon was very disparaging of him because he didn't invite her back to the X Factor but didn't bother telling her. So Amanda says in Weekend magazine, you know, um, you know, basically, don't bite the hand that feeds you, you know. And, and, what, and what they said about Simon was stabby, 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 she used. So Sharon Osborne sitting in her massive house in Beverly Hills sees this on our very own Mail Online, um, posts the, the, the piece, but also alongside it, right, it's a 500 word letter, open letter yeah. to Amanda, where she totally brought her down. I yeah. mean, it was, I mean, I, her, a savage. her publicist, her PR guru, Gary Farrow, who we both I'd know, know very well. um, he, he insists she wrote it herself. Right. And it, it, it is just one big takedown of Amanda, and it, and it was, you know, I was living in a Beverly Hills mansion before yeah, you were born. I saw that. You know, I get paid more. I bought yeah. paid more then than what you get paid now. And so, Amanda has since been very quiet, and I think she perhaps regret, regrets taking on Mrs. O. Yeah, has um, she not tweeted or Instagram no, or anything? No, I mean, I think. Um, it's all I good publicity for Britain's Got Talent, though. It's isn't great it? publicity for Britain's Got Talent, and of course, yesterday Amanda and Simon were in the same room. You know, Bezzies, yeah. um, they live very close to each other yeah. and they hang out a lot together. So, um, you know, I think obviously Simon's probably, I think that what we can take from this is that Simon will absolutely be loving this. Of course he? he is. I mean, he's been playing off his television wives against each other for, mm. you know, almost two decades. So, you know, we've had Sharon and Danny Minogue falling out. We've had, you know, Sharon and, and Cheryl. You know, we've had Danny and Cheryl. So it's but been... But will Amanda be loving it? I think Amanda. I think Amanda regrets perhaps mm. saying what she said. I think she. Saturday morning, I was told by her team, she stands by every word, and she is not sitting at home crying about this. She's at home and she is fine. She's, you know, she thinks it's great. Um, since then, it's all gone a little bit quiet. Mm. It was a pretty savage attack. It by was a savage uh, attack, and, and I think you know. I loved it. I, I read I every word. It was of so it. well written. I mean, it was so yeah. well written, and. I think the problem we've got from, from Amanda is, I think if she says one more thing, Sharon really will finish her off. Yeah. And, and I think she's probably a little bit scared about that. She'll yeah. have to speak eventually though, won't she? Is yeah. it going to be the number one thing that you ask her next time you interview her, I'm sure? Yeah, we were actually, we were told not to... Uh, to, to but if, told you, if you were to put those two in a ring together, there was only one person's going well, to emerge as the, the thing, winner. Well, this is the thing, there is only one winner. And actually yesterday, I'll give you a little um, nugget here. Yesterday, um, Amanda Holden did interviews for the weekend papers and we were told 
we couldn't ask about oh. Sharon. That's interesting. Yeah. So, 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 so she doesn't. She, want, she so doesn't she want. is bruised. She's feeling yeah, a bit she's bruised. bruised. She must be. And she doesn't want to reignite it. No. Which I understand, but it's a shame for the rest of us. Hey? Yeah. Bring on the next round, I say. That's it for today. Sarah Vine will be back again next Wednesday for more reaction to the stories making the headlines. And make sure you like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. So see you again next Wednesday. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.